Whose turn is it anyway is excited to announce that we are helping to organise and sponsor the much-loved Devon Board Game Weekend at the Fox and Hounds Hotel in Eggersford near Exeter. This event begins on Friday the 8th of November until Sunday the 10th of November. For more details about the event and where to get your tickets, please check out the show notes and we'll direct you to where you need to go. Hope to see you there. Welcome to Whose Turn Is It Anyway, your board gaming podcast where we bring you in the heart of our gaming group. We're joined today by a bunch of lovely people for now. That is Becky. Hi. Rob. Hi. And Tambo. Hello. As we play Come Game With Me, more explained later. But how's everyone doing? Really good. I'm all good. Yeah, all good. Back to work after being on holiday, so that's always a bit sad times. You had your tour of the lovely country of Greece? Yeah. Well, we went to two places in Greece. Went to Two places of Greece, uh, Crete and Athens. Nice. But we didn't. We did kind of trundle around a bit. It was good, really good. Yeah, good to trundle. And then you go back to work, and you're like, oh, mm. this is this is sad times. Back yeah. to real life. Yeah. yeah, but you have to do the real life to have the you know yeah, holiday exactly. life, don't you? So. You got to have the balance. Yeah, it's the way it is. Yeah, it so. works all right. Cool. Yeah. Any more to add? Not really. Yeah, let's get into it then, shall we? <laughs> Okay, it's time for Let's Talk About Hex, where we talk about what is hit our tables, all good things gaming-wise. So, actually, T, I'm going to come to you first, mate. Oh, good. Oh, that's nice. What's going on? Not too, well, so recently, I played Starship Captains. It was a game I won on the 24 board game marathon, and I was very excited to win it because I actually wanted it, so it all worked out really well. Um, so, basically, what you are, you're, just, you're the captain of a starship, a bit like Star Trek. <laughs> And you got As the to, name implies. Yep, and you've got to just give your all your crew members, so your ensigns, your cadets, and you've got to promote them, and you've got to give them orders of what rooms to do, and then to do things. So you explore the galaxy, and you do away missions, um, or you fight little um, space pirates, they're called. Okay. Pirates. Pirates, hey. but space pirates. No, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, all you do, you all your cadets are all different colors. So you've got um, the basic cadet, which is gray, and then you've got your ensigns, which is, I believe, yellow, red, and orange, I think. Mm-hmm. That's all head. So, but the only the, the certain colors can do certain room actions. So the reds can, um, I think, move. So you can move your ship. And the yellows are for tech. So you can upgrade your ship and get cool tech. And then you've got um, grays, which are just repair any damage on your ship. And they can't do, but they're pretty useless. Uh, but the other colors can repair. And there is another color for fighting, so firing weapons mm-hmm. to kill pirates. But um, you basically, you assign them to what you want them to do, and or you put them on away missions. I would definitely class this game as a, a very a top-end lightweight to medium. You can get it done in an hour, I think, mm. yeah, once you know how to play it. Um, but um, it is quite crunchy for what it is. Um, it's not a high-scoring game. You only get like 30 points or 40 points or something okay. like that. But um, it's good fun. Um, so you, you assign them to the, to the rooms, and then you have to exhaust them into the queue. So you've got to think about your next turn and what kind of order you, colors you want back. Um, but during the game, you can get medals, which will up, you can like promote them, mm. or you can change the color. So in the first, you need a free action, which is I'm going to spend the medal and I'm going to change a color to another color. So you can change the red ensign to a, a yellow or something, or you can promote a gray to any color you like. Okay. Um, or if you save up three medals, you can put them into commander, which will give them double bubbles basically so you can either do a room action twice if you use that commander in a spot or when you sign the different colors to the away missions to do an away mission all you've got to do is match the colors to the away mission so if it's like a red green or yellow whatever the colors are you just match each ensign to it, and that's what you're spending to do that away mission and that's where your big vps come in so is that a vp generator yeah that's where you get your big vps is from away missions generally and um, you get other vps from fighting pirate ships when um, fighting's easy all you do is you've got to be in the same row as a ship and then you've got to say i'm going to do it f- I'm going to destroy that pirate and you kill it. And then you flip it and you take damage to the ship and you get a reward, reward basically. But then you can get end, end score and VPs for how many pirates you've destroyed. But you've got to hold them in your cargo bay. But then when you take damage, your cargo bay takes damage. You've got to assign your damage token somewhere. So it's, you've got to think which way you want to do it. Um, but yeah, that, that's it. And you get these little androids you can get, which activate as a only, you can only use them on away missions, but they act as any color. Mm. Yeah, wild. But, but wild. Um, yeah, it's really good fun. Two player, 
No, full, full player. player. Oh, okay. Cool. So only full player max. Um, the the artwork's good, Rob. You like it because have you ever watched Lower Decks you know, on like, Amazon? Oh yeah, you need yeah, to yeah. watch that. That's it's yeah. my it's exactly really like, funny. Yes, yeah, that good. artwork of the, all the oh, cards. That's, cool. that's exactly what it's like. Ironically, when I saw the cover, that's instantly what I thought. I thought, huh, it's a Star Trek game. Yeah, but it, it is. It is and is, isn't. Isn't. Yeah, but it's not. Mm. Wink. Yeah, but, but like it is. like di- like dinosaur island, dinosaur world, whichever one it is that yeah. Curly had. Jurassic Park, but it's not. But it is. Yeah. But it's not it, for yeah, copyright reasons. Yeah, but reasons. no, but yeah. But winky winky, yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the, the tech tree is quite cool as well. And you've got a little ball at the bottom and they've got little symbols. So when you get a tech to put in, you've got to match the symbols. And when you match the symbols, you get bonus. So you can move your ship again or you can do a, another attack or something like that. So you're trying to combo all, all. And you get different room actions for cards in your tech, which gives you another room action to do. Or you can get ongoing abilities, which say every time you kill a pirate, you get to move one space and mm. stuff like that. Mm. So it's all bit quite of an engine bit builder. of an engine builder. Love and a tech un- tree. Love a tech tree. Yeah, it's, little, it's kind of like a little tech tree. But then you've, got, you've only got three cards on the, the game, which are VP and scoring cards. Mm-hmm. So you're all kind of fighting for them. Or if you're going from you want to get them quick, but they just take up your tech tree. Once you place your tech, you can't replace it. Okay. So it's, it's just like a give, you know... A, Make your mind take. up now, and then that's that's the end of it. That's it. Yeah, um, I love it. I think it's a great game. Yeah, oh. yeah, it's really no, nice. I think Davy and Curly Play they enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, but um, so yeah, so it's one I'm of them. Like if it's that like kind of light to midweight game takes an hour, that's great because you know for for me, yeah, you probably don't want a light to midweight that's going to take too long. No, but if it doesn't, then it starts to outstay its welcome a little bit. But if that's again, you could be at a convention, you can bust the game out in an hour. It's great because yep. you can kind of whiz through that kind of stuff. It's not too hard to set up. You all have your little uh, starship boards, yeah, and then you got one board in the middle, which is the universe, all that's, the different planets on. That's the only thing I've kind of seen of the game is the queue that you mentioned yep. with like all of these uh, kind of models or dudes just queuing up in like a curve. That's it. If you if you board, imagine like yeah. the Starship Enterprise, you got that ball, ball but you at yeah. the top, you got your crew coming in to the to the. To the cockpit, basically. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the turn, you bring them all in. You drag in five, I think it is. You can only drag in five at a time, and then yeah. nice. Yeah, it's good fun. Good no, stuff. No. Yep. Good stuff. I'm going to go next. Selfishly, um, I'm going to talk about Undaunted, the series, all of them, all of the games, all seven of them. No, not really. I was fortunate enough to play the latest Undaunted 2200 Callisto, which is all set in the future, space and spaciness and all that kind of stuff and i played on gaming rules uh, a couple of weeks ago and i might circle back on that in the end of this but actually that's not the game i want to talk about because i want to talk about undaunted stalingrad okay so for me i i mean i'm not a massive world war ii fan no i don't think anyone's a fan but you know what i mean like it doesn't historical kind of settings aren't aren't really my jam but i I kind of thought, well, I don't really have any games in that era, and it is quite an interesting era. Um, and I have played Undaunted Normandy um, a while back with Davy. I think he had it, and I always enjoyed the game. It was good fun, and Stalingrad a- adds a legacy element to it over like fifteen scenarios. And after playing Callisto, I was like, oh, that's really good fun. But just that whole World War II is kind of scratching a niche. And I just always wanted to try Stalingrad. So I thought, sod it, I'll go and buy it. And uh, yeah, for those that don't know what the Undaunted series is, it's basically World War II or whatever setting it's set in. It's a deck building game where you've got little um, kind of units and squads on, on the board. And you're playing cards to activate those units like orders. You're issuing orders to those units to either move them, shoot them, uh, scout uh, kind of ahead on, on the map and all sorts of different actions that you can kind of trigger off your cards. And you've got cards that are related to those units and you've also got kind of leader cards that aren't, but they're just like behind the behind the scenes just doing all the, you know, sipping the glass of wine, but, you know, <laughs> whatever they're doing. Pushing the little, you know, the little... Yeah. Pushing the little troop. unit pushers. Yeah, unit pushers. Yeah, all of that kind of stuff. And uh, and they're the ones that can kind of bolster more troops, i.e. get more decks in, uh, sorry, more cards into your deck. And the kind of rub of the game is that you, you draw four cards and you're always picking one card for initiative. So every card's got an initiative number and value and it's the a gunner or a scout or whatever. The better that card is, the higher the initiative, but you kind of want to play it because maybe I want to play that and actually activate that unit on the map. So you're kind of in this turmoil already at the start going, I want initiative because it's so important to have initiative because you get first off the blo- the the blocks and you can start shooting your enemy first and moving around. And, and, and at the end, it becomes really important because it can win you the game, as we found out. Um, 
so so yeah so it's quite a neat system each game can play 30 minutes 45 minutes depending on the scenario so it's quite fast paced you, you're kind of done and, and away you go but stalingrad adds the legacy element so you both play as uh the the, the russians and the germans which i admit in that era probably you know it's hard to get behind either side <laughs> for being honest but you know me and rob um decided to, to play and i said rob i don't know if you'll like this or you'll enjoy it but i thought i'd give it a go and we had a we had a game and uh off we went but the legacy element is that you kind of have your upgrade deck you've got a lock deck and you've got a reserve deck and so as you play the scenarios as your dudes get shot um and uh, as your dudes do really well in the scenario you'll, you'll end up upgrading them and and it's quite nice because the artwork on the card so even if you've got like three gunners in your deck each card is a person it's got a name on it and it's kind of like oh it's voldo or, or whatever Vlad or... yeah and and you go i remember him because he, he helped me out in the last scenario but then when you upgrade him it's the same artwork but he looks a bit stronger he's got armor on or he's got you know <laughs> a better gun yeah he's, he's, yeah, he's, 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 he's been working out yeah, yeah. He's a bit more seasoned in, in the war <laughs> and that kind of thing and then the reverse happens obviously if they get killed they're gone like they're done and then you get the reserve uh, from the reserve deck and you just get some sorry looking states of people with shovels and <laughs> um you know just don't want to be in this war obviously and they've been conscripted in so it's kind of weird that you kind of build in this thematic story around just a set of cards um but it's quite nice because what you do has permanence in the game um so if you're blowing up the map and i won't spoil anything but if you're blowing up the map um which are just these modular tiles in the box you've got stalingrad's represented by i don't know let's say 40 tiles in the box so if you're blowing like shit up then you're replacing those tiles with the ones from the reserve. And then therefore what was giving you a good defensive bonus is no longer giving you a defensive bonus. And that might change around. So whilst it was useful for the other team to blow a building up, it might turn around later in the game where I go, crap, I wish I didn't blow that building up because then I'd have all the, the benefits of it. I need so, the hospital now or whatever yeah, you blow whatever it. It I see. Okay. So it, it's good. I think it was a long drawn out game. It wouldn't be as fun, but the fact that it's fast paced and you can get it done. Yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. We're three games in, right, Rob? Yeah, We're... three games in. And for me, that was the, the key thing. You're like, it's a fast, quick game because uh, usually, you know, World War II games are pretty epic. Like especially World War Two, like battler games, that they're, they're quite big. Um, obviously, Axis and Allies comes to mind, where you know, you just five six hour game. So yeah, the fact that it plays very quickly is awesome. And I was a bit like, I don't know how I'm going to take to this because I, I, it's not typically my thing. Yeah, and I loved it. It was brilliant. It was so quick. It was so straightforward and so close. Yeah. Ironically, it came down to who had initiative the turn before. So when JP was talking about initiative, so you can clog up your opponent's deck with Fog of War where they can't do anything. It's like chaff, basically cards out of okay. chaff. Yeah. Mm. And when you can only draw four, like we, we had a couple of instances where we've drawn three Fog of Wars, so we can't do anything. And, you know, that initiative back and forth <laughs> um, was amazing. And like I say, we, we, we played a, a learning game. Then we played an actual game and what was that a couple of hours? Yeah, two games. So the second time we played it, we came knowing, you know, I came knowing that we're going to play a couple of games. Mm. And I think I got here about half seven. I was home again by 10. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And we played a couple of games and there's there's a bit of inventory that you could, that you have to take because with it being a legacy game, depending on who wins, takes the story down a different branch. Okay. Um, and obviously when units die, like JP said, they get, you know, they get replaced, they get upgraded. So there's a little bit of management with that, but even that was, you know, we're talking five, 10 minutes tops. Yeah. So with it, you were saying there's like a, a spacey version mm -hmm. and a world war yeah. to sort of Russian version. What other versions are there? Cause neither of those would ring my bell massively. It's mainly world war two or space. Okay. So All right. yeah. I mean, it sounds like a good kind of game, but yeah. I think the theme of it might put me off. Although the theme of it, it you, you kind of forget the okay. theme of it. Okay. It's, it's the artwork that draws you in. That, that, that's when you think, oh, I'm playing a World War II game. But it is run, shoot, find. Yeah. You know, it, it could it could be set in the you know, Wild West. It could be anything. Yeah. But because... That'd be quite good at Wild West. Undaunted. It would be quite yeah. fun, actually. Yeah. But um, If you're listening Undaunted. Yeah, Osprey Games. 
Wild Very West cool. version. We'll Come take, on. We'll take that check, please. But he, um, want, but he wants a pirate version. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pirate under... That would work as well. <gasps> yeah, it would it work. absolutely work. Just have ships. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I, see, I'm, I'm immediately, I'm yeah. drawn in now. Yeah. To the point where I got, I went home and thought, how, how much the Normandy version is? Because the, the original is, is the... Just after the D-Day landing, isn't yeah. it? So it's, it's that kind of push into France. Obviously, one person needs to defend. The other person needs to attack. Um, but there's like a North African front, uh, you know, every kind of theatre of war in World War Two. There's, there's almost like the a plane one, for the it. Battle of Britain one, the um, planes. Yeah. See this? It just doesn't. It just. But the game immediately. You say the word Stalingrad. I'm like, yeah, I'm checked out. Yeah, so. I was exactly the same. Yeah. Exactly <laughs> yeah, the yeah, same. I, yeah. And then when we sat down and played it, I was like, this is f- the game is just fantastic. Yeah, that mm. that can win you over. I think. I think sometimes you just have to get over the theme, don't you? Yeah. Or the theme can draw you in. You know, it Depends. makes you more likely to play something. Yeah. But also, the theme can draw you in, and it you've played it for the theme alone. And yeah, it's not, but and, this, then it's, and then yeah, you're not going to play it again. But the you? game mechanics, it's quick, it's it's straightforward, but the the tactics involved because they're really small maps, like they're really small, congested, tight maps, and um, because it's dice rolling as well, there's an element of chance, which is amazing because I swear that JP had. The dice that I use for Hoplomachus. Oh, right, the crap <laughs> ones. I can hit, you can hit a barn door. <laughs> I was having words with my rifleman, going, "You are shit. You deserve to die." Which was amazing. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. It yeah. was so funny. Um, so yeah, there's that element of chance in it. You, you do your best to mitigate it because yeah. the the number to hit goes up how many tiles away you are. So you you kind of want your guys close, but, but you want but you want them close where they're not going to get taken up too easily yeah, as well so yeah. there is there is a bit of ebb and flow with it which works really well yeah. considering it's a deck builder yeah. yeah you might have sold me on it it's and I didn't fun. think I was going to want to play that mm. when I you're mean, describing it when we're done borrow it you and Curly yeah. have a go can you reuse the legacy yes. kind of thing then oh that's or cool resettable. I quite like that I don't like the idea that when no. you've played a legacy game you just got to no. bin it all the, all that's just, just, just all the cards are in number order providing yeah. they just cool. go back in you literally just follow the instructions so it will say you you are on 1A you do scenario 2 2 and a. there's a, and you've each got your own log books so it will give you the mission from your point of view okay and yeah, a secret yeah, intel cool. and for secret you only intel. So oh, I quite like the idea of that. So that's why, like, yeah, I'm not going to ruin anything, but the third scenario is just, it, oh, it's amazing. Yeah, for one side. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't tell JV what the new unit was, and his face when I just dropped it on the table, oh, it, was, it was amazing. <laughs> it was so, like, I could see a little tear in the corner of his eye, like, oh, my God, what's happening here? And it was so much fun. So like those little Russian boys. I you know, highly, fighting. Hi, yeah, I feel a bit uncomfortable being the Germans. In a World War Two game, well, it didn't stop your role playing it, though, did it? No, I did. I went. <laughs> let's just re- let's just categorise that to the Nazis. It's not the Germans; That's it's the correct. Nazis. So let's Nazi let's Germany. call them Nazis. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, but in the game, they're just the Germans. So, especially when you're pulling your reserves, I suppose, or just people random that just yeah, been, yeah, yeah. just been pulled up. Exactly. Those. Exactly. Awful period of well, time. Well, I think I think you might have I think you might have sold it. To I'd me. highly recommend. Definitely it. sold it to me. Yeah. Somebody give it a go. Like if you give it a go and you think actually, do you know what? This isn't for me. Then fair enough. But you've wasted forty minutes on what is potentially a very very good game. Yeah, yeah I could waste forty. Minutes. I've wasted far more longer than that on far less less and worthy things. I'll just kind of finish up and saying like, if you think the system sounds interesting, like you, Becky, the theme is just not your jam, but you can't like sci-fi that kind of setting, then check out the new one because. That comes with uh, eight, eight scenarios, and uh, it adds an elevation mechanic, which uh, doesn't kind of appear in any any of the other Undaunted. So you kind of have kind of advantage if you're high up shooting down, and disadvantage if you're down shooting up. So there's just there's there's a few more little uh, nuancey rules in there, which add add to to the mix. But generally, it's the same system. It's doing the same things, and if you like to, you know, fight like a rebellion style mining corporation versus the uh, you know, corp security people coming in trying to muscle the the miners out, and they're kind of revolting. Then that's your jam. So yeah, undaunted. Check it out. Very, very much fun. Right, uh, Becky. Uh, well, I want to talk about Mycelia, a strategic mushroom game. I know that Curly has mentioned that on the last episode, but it was my game, so I'm, I'm mentioning it. So splitstone games are like yeah, yeah double bubble. Uh, gets yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he has a very different. Um, uh, recollection of our game and uh, you know kind of analysis on how it plays because no surprises I lost quite extravagantly Mm -hmm. but I still had really good fun 
And the artwork is beautiful, which we all know is very important to me. Um, so yeah, don't not to be confused with another game called Mycelia. Which there is. It came so, out a year before. Yeah, so when you're looking at like YouTube videos to try and figure out how to play, the, the artwork's very different. So you can very quickly tell. This one is very sort of botanical, I would say, uh-huh. in its in its um, appearance. You've only got six things you can do, which is nice and simple for little, easy, simple bears like me. <laughs> you can move your mother mushroom. You can explore the map and and put another tile out. Because basically you've got this kind of construction of like, it's like a star shape out of six 12 even little triangles and they look very beautiful on your table but every game is going to be different because you as you put another tile on because it's a triangle you can't it's not like a hex so it's going to look in a certain shape this can sprawl in really different ways so that's really cool so yeah, you move your mother mushroom which is like your main bit um you can fruit new mushrooms if you've got enough resource you can spore which is basically generate more resource that other people can come and steal from you which is very upsetting Fair when day. you're yeah when you're fruiting your mushroom you can use any spores in your little section that might be other people's and it's really upsetting when someone goes oh well i'm gonna spend that one on that one you're like you sod that's my spore that oh, i spent all that my time red doing. one i needed yeah. my red one you can then once say once each mushroom is spored twice you can decay it which then gives you like a bonus sometimes an upgrade or maybe like one of mine was move any outside tile to somewhere else which Uh is quite helpful because someone else had my stuff over there and I kind of was able to nick it back and put it around the other side or you could discover which is um basically pick from the three mushrooms in the shop but like wingspan you've got like your bird table so you've got like your mushroom table is that yeah I don't know mushroom table Yeah. yeah um it's, there is a bit of chance because when you spore, you put one little cube on your mother mushroom and then you roll a dice to decide which way the wind is blowing. So it can either go one of three ways from the side of this triangle. So you can have all these fantastic ideas uh, and then, it, you know, think, oh, I've got two out of three chance. Yeah, that'd be all right. That No, you're, no, you're going to roll your one yeah, yeah. and you're like, damn wind, you <laughs> stupid. Now look at my, my spores are in stupid places. Yeah. But it's cool. really good and it played really quickly. Because the game is triggered as soon as five people have, as soon as one person has five decayed yep. mushrooms in one of each slot, because mm-hmm. you've got like five little areas. So once you've decayed your mushroom, you then get like your mushroom token back and you can play another mushroom out on the board. But that decay power stays with you, which is great. So that might be something like move your mother mushroom three spaces now instead of just the two. So you can move around the board easier. Yeah, really, really good. And I, I'm a bit freaked out by mushrooms, I have to be honest, after watching The Last of Us. But I managed to get over myself and play it. It was <laughs> fine. It's really good. And the way that um, Jack has designed it, you can so clearly tell he's got a graphic design background. All the colours are very muted and appropriate. Mm. Like, And the iconography is easy. Like, It's got these kind of squiggles, which probably, they're not just squiggles, Jack, I'm sorry. They are probably very relevant to, I don't know, maybe what people used to write the wind when they were cavemen on the wall. So it's like a little, it's like a rune or something, that kind of symbol. It's all very, it's just very naturey and very mm. nice. And the it all goes back in the box beautifully, which I kind of thought about after we did our kind of storage episode. I was like, yeah, this has really been thought about. Yeah. Everything fits beautifully back in the thing. The pieces are very nice they're just wooden pieces like you've got little wooden cubes and little wooden mushroom shapes and little wooden kind of disc shapes mushroom but, meeples yeah so Mush mushroom poles. meeples and mush- yeah yeah, yeah. Room <laughs> but poles, even, poles, yeah. even though these little squares i've got no intention of blinging those up because they look they're right they don't want they're to be glittery and shy. they're it. absolutely yeah. appropriate if yeah. ever there was an endorsement for a game yeah <laughs> it's that becky doesn't even feel the becky need, doesn't need to bling this yeah. even becky doesn't want to bling this yeah the only thing i have done is sleeve it because after the wingspan That's debacle fair. of 2024 for 2023 <laughs> Christmas, I, I would leave everything now, so that's fine. I, which, I, but I did feel bad about because he's gone to a lot of effort to make sure that things are, you know, there's no plastic in the game. There's no, yeah, yeah. I mean, there is now in my box because everything's sleeved. <laughs> but, but I did feel bad about that, and that's the first time I've ever kind of felt ecologically bad about sleeving a game. Hmm. But I did. It came with three lovely art prints, which was really nice. Mm. But what I've been doing mostly is constructing Lego lately. So I just want to give a quick shout out to how amazing lego is i'm kind of a bit late to the bandwagon i'm 40 and have not really done much lego before this but there we are so now i have completed the milky way art lego which is a massive like it's a piece of art for you all yeah it's stunning what a what a beautiful thing i don't know if anyone's seen it here but just 
looks great. All the colours. All the colours, yeah. blues and purples. So it's, it's spacey, which, as we all know, is not necessarily my jam, but I like kind of galaxy artwork and all the purples and, you know, yeah, nebulary nice kind of shoes. stuff. It looks lovely. And we uh, bought Barada on our way to the holiday. Yeah, Kelly was mentioning on the last episode. Oh, yeah, so, he's very excited about yeah, it. Yeah, so we bought it in Catwick Airport. And you can leave your stuff there if it's big and bulky. So we actually collected it on the way home. So yeah. that oh, worked really well. Oh, nice. Yeah. Good, good. Because uh, it was a big discount in the airport, which is like, well, it'd be stupid not to. <laughs> Welcome so, to the rabbit warren. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've already bought the uh, wildflower bouquet. But I started making that last night. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I've been mostly doing. However, the games I've been playing was, yeah, mycelia, a Fair strategic play. mushroom game. Yeah, yeah I, I want to play I, again. I don't have a shelf of shame when it comes to board games, but I do when it comes to Lego. <laughs> so, uh, My yeah. Lego of shame. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> it's a beautiful place to be. <laughs> Nice one. Rob, take us home. So me and you played, or me and JP, I should say, for the people who aren't in this room. Um, <laughs> we eventually, well, I eventually got um, Gloom of Killforth to the table and actually played it correctly, which was nice. I made him. I was going to say, have you there? Yeah. No, it, <laughs> I missed a rule the first time I played it. I played it up, set it up, thought I'd have a mess around, see what it's all about. Loved it played one of the rules wrong now normally when i set a game up it's kind of left there for like a week or two and i kind of come back to it i'll have a game or or a prolonged game over a couple of evenings um but for some reason i had to pack it away and i can't remember why i think we had guests over and we needed the, the table space Ugh, guests and table. <laughs> 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 tables oh. no so um so and of course things life everything else I hadn't managed to get it back to the table but um but our wives were both busy on a Saturday separately. Um, so I said, come over. So we ended up playing Gloom of Killforth, a Hall or Nothing game. Uh, met Tristan Hall at the um, UK Games Expo. We had a conversation. He was showing me the artwork of the game. Bought it there and then. Thought this is right <laughs> up my street. Curly was very happy that I bought it because he was like, thank God you bought it because I would have done otherwise. Um, and it's basically a kind of, um, there's 25 cards in the middle and that is your map. So each card has a different location. So your character moves orthog orthogonally, orthogonally um, to various locations. And this is the world. And it's different every single time because the way you shuffle and lay the cards out, apart from the center card, because that's the main city. So you've got four areas that you can go to. Plains, mountains, badlands, and the forests. And different things happen in, in different locations. Um, but what's interesting is your health is your action points. So you want to take as little damage as possible because then that means you've got less actions next turn. Um, and things happen. You discover enemies. You discover people that you can persuade to become your allies. And, and it's all different stats um, that you roll dice for and test, try and get successes against. Now, we played the easy version, which yeah. is... You know, successes are four, five, six. The the bigger boy game is um, four, fives, and sixes are successes, which is really frustrating when you're trying to convince somebody to come and join you, and you're just you're running out of actions because you're like, please come with me. And, four, four. Oh, yeah, so you're just going up, going no, no. <laughs> what, what's interesting is if you if you try to persuade someone and you don't get a single success, they just get really pissed off of you yeah. and become an enemy and start oh, fighting. Oh no, you. it sounds like The Sims. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is which is like, please, please, just one success. I don't care about the rest. Which is really fun. But ultimately, there is a a end demon boss that's trying to take over the land. So. It, you, you each have a go, and then which is the day phase, and then the night phase, um, you have a night deck um, that when you pull over, it will turn one of the locations into gloom, which is turning it over. So that place has now become Bad times. gloomy, yeah. cursed, More not, not a place, yeah, <laughs> yeah, not a good place to go. And if you end your turn there, you lose health. Okay. So the game ends when all the locations have become dark, they've gone into gloom. Um, but each each player, you can play it cooperatively or you can play it um, competitively, but it's not really competitive. You, you can't really interact with each other's games that much, which is quite nice. But you've got your own saga to complete. You've got your own story to achieve. So you, you, ha you have five stages of your story. If you get five done, then the big bad comes out. If you beat the big bad, first person to beat their big bad wins the game. That's your race, isn't it? Yeah. Which... Um, which was really good. 
I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, to the point where it's still set up and I plan on playing it this weekend because it's so much fun. What a wonderful game. The artwork is absolutely beautiful in a terrifying, horrible demon kind of way. Um, but the artwork's fantastic and we had an absolute blast. Well, I had an absolute blast. I'm assuming you did. Yeah, no, I actually, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. And that's not a, a slur on the game at all. I just, these games aren't like my favorites, really. Um, but yeah, mechanically, it was doing something slightly different, which was nice. It's not your typical dungeon crawler. Um, I think the character and classes that you can pick has a nice level of variability in the game. So I was a vampire assassin. So, nice. you know, every nice. time I killed someone, I healed up. Great. Um, and and what was quite nice is that when you defeat uh, an enemy or you go on quests or whatever, you get a reward um, for that and that's a could be an item or a spell or or an ally but you don't get that straight away what you get is the card but it's it tells you it's basically a rumor it tells you where you you know where you need to go to maybe acquire that item or, or card which is quite nice like hmm, okay then you have to go and venture off and then you can then put that as an asset into your player and start benefiting from you know better stats or whatever so it's almost like you've, you've heard like a bit of yeah, you've heard Gossip in the... Gossip and, oh, if you go to this whispers. place and good things will happen. Yeah, exactly. There's a big massive sword that's going to add two to my fight power, but it's all the way over there. Hmm. Mm. Or do I bother going all the way over there, actually? Because I've got stuff to do. I need to go on with my like, my plot. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I enjoyed it. I'd absolutely play it again. Um, I do wonder, after playing it, let's say, ten times, would the kind of bosses feel the same that, 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 ah, I have you there uh-huh. you have an answer that's where you buy the expansion <laughs> yeah, <of> <laughs> more bosses more bosses yeah. more stuff more. I, I believe there's three expansions oh there's, is there there's an expansion that adds more scenarios to the game um, there's an expansion that adds more classes to the game and then there's a pimp my gloom section which gives you pimpiness better cards better yeah. standees Things like that. So yeah, but J, like, like JP said, the um, the amount of characters that you can be. I think there's six classes and six races. So you can mix and match mix with and match that. Them, yeah. yeah. So you want to be an elf shaman, for example, you can awesome. do that. Yeah. But also his uh, the Hall or Nothing catalog. They've they've got different variations of this game. They've got a pirates one, haven't they? That's Call of Killforth, where you play as pirates. So rather than travelling to different areas around around the land. You sail so, across the sea cool. to different places. But it's still the same premise of the s- same system. Yeah. That, yeah. Oh, and, the, cool. and the other one is the Shadow of Kilforth, which is, is that kind the ninja of one? set in, yeah, Eastern kind of mythology. Yeah. Um, cool. um, but he has actually released a new one called Creel Manor, um, which is a similar thing, but you're walking around a manor. So each location is a different place in this manor. Okay. That's mm. cool. So the, the location size is still quite sprawling, but um, it's more contained. Yes, and and it's a tighter story. So, um, so yeah, but I I loved it, absolutely loved it. Um, it's where it's where I'm looking at getting the the pimp, my gloom, pimp my gloom, because <laughs> just for the title alone is fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm not gonna lie. But Tristan, like I say, when I spoke to him at the UK Games Expo, like really humble for for creating such a wonderful um product i mean he was he was a really humble guy. Um, and and yeah, and obviously he spoke to me and Curly at length about his product which i mean you know he must have been quite bored up by the end of the, by the end of our time uh but he was very very sweet and very very nice so um so yeah check it out really really good nice nice there sounds we go. awesome yeah i think you'd like it too yeah. you'd love it yeah cool that ends the uh, let's talk about hex so let's get on to the main segment <laughs> So for this main segment, I thought I'd want to do something a bit different. So when I was actually creating my run of episodes, I was thinking, wouldn't it be really cool what everyone's asking for in the board gaming industry <laughs> is a mashup between Come Dine With Me and a Games Day. I thought someone's bound to have done this before. And lo and behold, I don't think they have. So I thought, nice. sod it. This is, it. <laughs> this is what we're going to do. And for anyone that doesn't know what Come Dine With Me is, I mean, if you live in the UK you're probably going to understand what I'm talking about. But if you don't, it's a TV show where they pick the most randomest people to come together in a town 
somewhere in the UK. In a town near you, just a town random, you. random town. Yeah, different place every every week or whatever. And when you say five people, you mean five of the opposite yeah. kind of personality most, traits that you can get. Yeah. The, yeah. Mo- the most the um, most disparate, not alike at all people. And they're going to clash. Yeah. Like, yeah. They purposely pick these people to clash together. And then they basically take it in turns to host a, a dinner evening as they go round and try to attempt to cook a free course meal and everybody secretly votes on how that evening was with a narrator over the top that's usually taking the piss every five minutes about what everyone's doing and and everyone just being really nice to everyone's face but really stabby and snidey in the background when they're on their own. <laughs> that's the show. And it's British kind of weirdness at its best, isn't it? It has kind of spawned a huge amount of memes. So yes. at the very end, when they reveal the scores, they get like a, a cash prize. And it's not like, it's like 100 quid or something. Yes, so it's not, it's not it's, it's, I think it's a little bit more. I think it's about a thousand. Is it? Are you sure? It's a thousand pounds. It's a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds. Yeah. I thought it was mm. like at most 200. Anyway, it's, it's an amount of money that isn't absolutely utterly life changing yeah, like, it's yeah. not buy a car buy a new house kind no. of money so it's not worth getting it'll just pay it'll just pay for your electricity bill in 2024 yeah, <laughs> yeah. having the other four people around. Around. <laughs> yeah. and the absolute tantrums that can happen yeah. when people go you all voted my badly and you mine yeah. was amazing it's amazing i've made my own bread well you didn't make your own bread you just store bought it and all of this it, nonsense it, yeah. goes like it's, it's brilliant it is funny it's yeah. very British, though, so I can understand if people haven't heard of it. All yeah. that sounds bananas to people. So to twist this up, we're going to kind of play that game, um, but except of doing a meal, it's a games day. Now, because we're all busy people, we're not actually going to sit and do the games days, and oh. which would be awesome, but we'll probably be doing this for about a year and a half by the time we get around it. So we've all got our own kind of games day that we've pitched together um, and there are three kind of areas that we need to kind of sell, shall we say, to, to the group. And that is the environment that this games day is going to be held in. And that can be wherever the hell we want. Um, the, the games list that we're going to put on for everybody uh, as part of this group. And the third thing is the food that we're going to provide. And that's what we're going to sell. So what you're going to hear is, is one of us, and we'll, we'll probably get on Schwazi and we'll, we'll pick that in a second. But one of us will, will begin it. They'll sell the idea and then we'll all secretly slag them off only maybe if it's crap or maybe it would be really nice. Who knows? So we might just be a bit more horrible than we normally are, but mm. it's cool because it's in the spirit of the show. And it's kind of like seeing as what we're actually like when we're playing board games. Yeah. So it's, you know, it exactly. is what we really like, really. So all bets are off, basically. So mm. we'll all be recording those segments uh, on our own. And, uh, and I actually can't wait to edit this one because... <laughs> That'd be the first time where most of us would have heard what people have said. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, just be mindful of that, I'm just saying. So, yeah, so we'll all get a score um, and the, the score is out of 10 for everybody. So there's basically total points will be 30. So the, per- the person who has the most points by the end of this is the winner. And that's come game with me. <laughs> So, welcome to Come Game With Me. So, firstly, we need to see who's first up to host. So, first up hosting is our lovely Becky. So, Becky, do your best. I'm painting are, the picture with words here. We can't wait to experience okay. your game day. So, as a close second, I was going to say, it's going to be at my house, because that's the place I like being best in the world. And I'd be in my pyjamas and comfy clothes, and everyone else should also wear their comfiest clothes they own. Which would be a nice thing, but that's we we actually do do that in real life. I thought, no, let's go go big or go home with this. It's going to be on a massive boat in the middle of the World Showcase Lagoon in Epcot in Disney World. 
because that is my second happy place. If it's not in my own house, that's my second happy place. So it's going to be during the Flower and Garden Festival. So all around is basically in a lovely lagoon in a lovely boat with nobody else there, with just the lovely sights and the sounds around us of people having a great time. There's going to be colours everywhere. You look around, you can see like a mock-up of Marrakesh over there. Oh, look, there's the Eiffel Tower, mock-up of Paris. A massive boat, like fancy luxury sort Mm -hmm. of yacht kind of style here, not some little rowboat nonsense. This is a big, proper, lovely thing with probably a slightly bigger board game table than we've got. So just slightly bigger, proper geek and sun styly or natural 20 whatever pick your pick your table of choice here so that is our location uh, there's going to be you know sort of somebody on hand to bring you cups of tea and coffee basically the, what i normally do at home but someone else is going to do it because this is my party so that is going to be our environment okay it's all expenses paid so you've been flown out there you know luxury kind of i don't know limousine taking you from the airport to this all right so no expense spared here, folks. All right. I'm now going to go on to the food because we all know that's almost as important as what games you're playing. So it's going to be like easy party food. So like pick and mix stuff like pizza, southern fried chicken, burgers, basically like barbecue stuff with like maybe a nice salad, like a Mediterranean couscous or just something that you can feel healthy that's not really healthy at all, to be honest. And roast potatoes with loads of salt because I really like them. <laughs> um, for snacks, there's going to be like the trifecta of goodness. So you're going to have crisps, like Monster Munch, Flaming Hot and the roast beef flavor, frazzles, kettle chips and onion rings. So you've got like proper crisps and like mazy snacks. Um, there'll be small chocolate things like celebrations and heroes because you want things that you can just pick with one hand, right? You don't want to have to sit with your knife and fork. You, you want easy snacks. But I like the crisp section. Then you've got your chocolate sections. And then there's sweets. So we're going to have specifically flown out there, specifically Lidl's jelly beans, both sour and regular flavor, because they are the best jelly beans there are. And I don't care who says they're not. They absolutely are. Haribo jelly men. And it's very important. Not just Haribo star mix. No, 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 no. The jelly men, because they're just slightly like chewier. Right? This is very important. I don't know why you're all laughing. This is very important. (laughs) Um, and continual tea and coffee will be available with these waiter people. There's always Pepsi Max in our fridge that's on the boat, but whatever. And like Lilt, but we might even spread out and have the proper Lilt, not even the Lidl's version of Lilt, which we have. Um, and Vimpto is always available as well. I mean, because we're in Disney World, we probably could get the food from Epcot, but well, why would you do that? We're going to have all the snacks that I've just said. So don't forget to so party food, like barbecuey stuff. And then you've got your lovely trifecta of sweets, crisps, and chocolate. All right, so that's what we're having. The games list. Now, this was quite tricky because it depends on who's coming. So because it's you guys, so we've got JP, Tambo, and Rob. I mean, I'd really like to play Ark Nova, but that's going to score me an instant one from Tambo. So we're not playing Ark Nova. We're going to play Terraforming Mars as our main sort of uh, main event. Um I think we should have a couple of little small games as well to to play while maybe we're having more focus on the food. So we're going to have a couple of games of Scout and a couple of games of just one. I was thinking Fire Tower, but we might have that as like a a little aperitif for afterwards. So we're going to play a big game of Terraforming Mars, a couple of quick games of Scout and just one while we're eating our snacks. Um, I'd quite like to play a draft and write records just as a a change of, of things. And then we're going to have a lovely, big old, juicy social, a lovely, big old, juicy social deduction game. We're going to play Unfathomable and it's going to be really fun because we're all going to have a nice time. So with that, because we're on this boat, we're going to have a, um, I've curated a brilliant list of like ambient tracks suitable for each game. So I'm playing Terraforming Mars, like Melodice, but better. So it's going to be like maybe... In fact, actually, we're playing Terraforming Mars. We could have the Epcot music when you enter. So it's kind of like a spacey, but not really spacey music. Um, When we play Scout Just One, we can have, well, I don't really mind then. And then when we play like Unfathomable, we're going to have my curated mix of the the rowboat kind of noises with the gulls in the background and like sort of 40s jazz. But quietly in the background, so it gives you the theme. And that's my game day. I think maybe I might have cheated a little bit because the actual likelihood that everyone can be sitting on a massive super yacht in the middle of 
you know, the World Showcase Lagoon in Epcot is a bit unlikely. But I honestly don't know how you could get better than that. That is literally the happiest place on earth. And it's my happiest place on earth. Well, I don't know who she thinks she is. All expenses pay trip all the way out to Florida. <laughs> Obviously trying to buy the points, like as if, come on. Hello guys, Rob here. Well, I thought that was a little bit underwhelming. I mean, who goes to Epcot, which to be honest is the worst of all the Disney parks, to play board games. It shows how boring Epcot is. So, Becky's day out um, in Disney World. Um, great location, I quite like it. It's all good, but you know... I would have kind of liked some proper meal, wouldn't you? I mean, I like my snacks and my crisps, and if I couldn't live the whole day off it. Who doesn't like the trifecta of, of snacks, of crisps, chocolate, and sweets? What what more could you want with that? Also, yeah, why aren't we eating all the posh food? We're in Epcot. Why are we having frazzles? That's an absolute joke. Absolute joke. Um, but it was nice to have coffee all day. Love that. Um, and, and the food choices, I mean, that's what Becky had for her birthday. So, you know... I mean, I love Unfathomable, but Terraforming Mars, really. And those games I picked, they are they are the best ones. So I can't think how that could get better than that, to be perfectly honest. Also, we're on a boat. The table was wobbling all over the place. The amount of times my components fell off the table is just getting absolutely ridiculous. The games? Um, TM, love TM. And I love, I think the game choices were actually really good. I'll give that due to Becky. And that I don't dislike. And, and Fathom was one of my favourites at the end. So all the social discussion argument, I enjoyed that. But I'll give her a due. Um, I'm a big sucker for ambient tracks. And yeah, little jelly, jelly beans are pretty good. They're pretty good. But unfortunately, being at Disney World, mm, all I really want to do is go into Disney World. So I got really distracted with that. I was, like, I was on the boat with my mates and playing games, which was great. But there's Disney World right outside. And I'd like to go and see it. But, you know um in terms of the games like come on becky i know you like your light games but seriously do we have to keep playing all the light games it's like it's a bit boring apart from that i think having all the food and that having my coffee all day which is right on my street i think becky knew that and I had a really good day so um yeah for me a good start not definitely not a winner i give it a solid six out of ten i'm gonna give you Seven out of ten. I'm going to score Becky a seven, just because the food was a bit of a letdown and the location was too distracting. I really wanted to go into Disney World. Okay, we're back and we're going to decide who's going to be the next host. And that's going to be Tambo. Okay, so from my location, I'm a bit like Becky, my house would be the best thing, but as we can go anywhere, you probably haven't heard of it, so I'm going to go show you a picture, but I want to do a Halloween style one. Ooh. I, um, everyone has to dress up nice. everyone has to go to fancy dress and it's um it's going to be based on halloween so it's going to be a bit scary so the, the location will be in chillingham castle and i don't know if you guys have ever seen this but it's a really scary castle i'll show you a picture yeah that looks freaky right it's near newcastle you'll get your travel up in a limo and stuff yeah, obviously, yeah. Like, no, just yeah. like becky yeah, nice. and um but it's it used to have the rumors that there was dead bodies found in the wall um, there is also lots of scary other rooms and there was a, there is a dungeon, um, a torture dungeon. So we're going to set the table up in a torture dungeon in a dark area. Okay, so that's going to be the thing. We're going to have a waiter who's dressed as Lurch. So you rang. So he's going to come up and he's going to wait on you hand and foot so you can bring tea, coffee all day. Um, all that malarkey. Um, so for the f- we'll do into for the food. So basically, I'm doing a little, there's always a little buffet, like a little bit like not as scrubbing as Becky's, but there's going to be homemade stuff that I've made, like homemade cookies, Halloween cookies with little pictures on top. I'm going to do these lively marshmallow rice crispy cakes, but you're doing shapes of cauldrons and Frankenstein heads and pumpkins. Um, there's always going to be your crisps, your snacks, um, chocolate, um, but that's not going to be the only food there. After playing all our games, probably about the third game in, we're going to sit and have a nice meal on the big long table. But it's not going to be that exquisite I was going to do. For starters, mummy hot dogs. So what mummy hot dogs are, are just they're straight hot dogs with a string, nice, nice cheddar cheese wrapped in puff pastry. So you do like strings, wrap it around, and you put little eyeballs on the hot dogs. So you like, you've got these mini hot dogs, mummy ones. <laughs> and you just do like a ketchup and mustard dip. That's your starter. And then for main course, we're going to do the ghost favourite meal, which is spaghetti. Oh, and eyeballs <laughs> <laughs> so um 
Yep. So you can have some spaghetti and meatballs, basically, but they can be shipped like eyeballs and cheese and all the tomatoes for the blood and stuff. And for dessert, it's going to be a homemade blood orange meringue pie. Homemade, all made by me. And so it's going to be a lot of effort, but that'll be pre-done. So it won't be me not being there. So, and obviously Lurch is there to put it all out and do all the finer bits and then do it. Um, now for the games, unfortunately I probably haven't chosen the right ones, but we'll see what we guess. To start, my favourite of all time, Mansions of Madness. We're going to start off with a bit, nice game of Mansions of Madness. And in the background, we're going to have scary music all day. It might be a bit repetitive at some point, like Ghostbusters theme, you know, like the, um, the, um, oh, I can't remember the, um, like all sorts of different Halloween, that for the theme tune from Halloween, all sorts of different things, like all scary music going on. Um, you will be doing a tour of the mansion as well. Like, like you can come down me, have a look around people's houses, but you can have a complete tour of this. And then obviously it should be really scary. Um, so we're going to start off with mansions and then we're going to go for a bit more of a brain build up. So we're going to go into Septima because it's all about witches. If you notice, all these games are all kind of going to be Halloween-y. So we're going to do the witch hunting with Septima. So it's a bit more brain meld. And obviously then we'll have our dinner and then we're just going to go ease into a bit of a fun game of quacks. So, you know, a bit of fun, luck building, that's great. And um, unfortunately, this is probably my cup of tea, but we're going to play a game of Marvel Zombies. So we're going to keep it. We've got to get zombies in so to keep it the Halloween theme. And then at the very end, my all-time favorite, not everyone's going to we're going to have a game of Nemesis with a backstabbing. And then we're going to... So now I'm going to be the judge of the best costume. Obviously not me myself, but then I'll judge the winner of the best costume. And the winner will get a board game. Yeah. So whoever did the nice. Which board game? Oh, that's which board game? Yeah. That's a good question. Uh, which, 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 which board game? Oh, nice. I like what you did there. That was completely <laughs> accidental. <laughs> um, it'll, be, it'll be a copy. Unfortunately for Becky, she's already got it. But I would say unfathomable. I'll take it. That, They'll that take fits. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice big board game. Yeah. And that is it. That'll be the day. Well, I think I've completely smashed that. That day went really well. Um, I thought the snacks were a good idea. They love the the fancy dress. Who doesn't like fancy dress, right? They all seem to enjoy it. Um, I've got to say, I, I love Tambo's games. But whenever I hear the words fancy dress, a little bit of my soul leaves my body. I can't be fucked. Well, I mean, I'll be honest, he had me at like Spooky Castle and it's fancy dress. So I can't really pick fault with it. I want to, but I can't. Well, there's one thing I can say is I cannot listen to another bloody rendition of Monster Mash again and again. So sorry, Tambo, but that was absolutely diabolical. If you wanted horror, I think that's exactly what you've got me, old mucker. And let's be it. Oh, I did one up on Becky, at least I did a three-course meal, you know, a nice sit-down meal, not just snacks all day. It's a bit of healthiness, right? You know, I lived with Tambo for two years, and the only thing I ever seen him cook were, like, turkey burgers. So I understand he's a very good cook. He is a great cook. He's a great chef. But when he could have had anything, I mean, come on, mate. You get to step your game up a bit. In terms of the food, can't knock it. Your food is pretty awesome. You're a great chef, and... I can't even pretend to even knock, knock that right now. And the games, well, who doesn't like any of those games? It's, it's a bit silly. It's all scary, all on theme. Um, and the, the setting, well, the setting was great for exactly what I wanted to do. Get more scared, get more scary. I loved all of his games. I mean, Marvel Zombies, I've not played it, but, you know, it's probably all right. Christ, could you have picked a location that didn't stink of dead corpses? I mean... I'm trying to play these games and just the smell of festering, rotting flesh just kind of puts you off, mate. I love the theme and I love how everything's together. And you can just so tell that Tambo is a chef, like he's picked like a spooky food. That's really, really clever. I really love that. Um, in terms of the games, I get that what you're doing. You're trying to keep it all to the horror theme and yeah, well done. It's, you know, a bit, a bit predictable, mate. That's all I'm going to say. It's just a little bit predictable. And I didn't even win the board game. Probably because my costume was a bit shit. But yeah, that's it. So I'm I'm really happy the day went and yeah, no one's gonna beat that. Anyway, loving your work. Seven out of ten. So I think for me, because of the games, they're just not quite my bag. I'm gonna give you a six out of ten. I don't wanna give him a nine out of ten, but I think I'm gonna have to. Yeah, nine out of ten, I suppose, T. Well done, mate. Okay, with two more to go, uh, let's find out who's going to be the next host, the penultimate host. And it looks like it's me. So, 
for my ultimate games day, guys, you've all gone very big, haven't you? We've gone to Florida. We've gone to a spooky castle. I'm taking you to an 80s themed retro vintage arcade location that's been brought back to, to life. So as soon as you walk in, the music is 80s. It's 80s rock, hair metal, all of that stuff. Think Stranger Things. It's my favourite kind of metal. Exactly. Mm. All the, the, the plinking and the plonking of the arcade machines as they're kind of on their loading screens. You're instantly transported back to being a kid. And we've got a special table right in the middle, kind of not too close to the machines because they'd be distracting. They go, beep, 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 beep. They're, there, they're there, they're away. And if you ever need a break, you can go and play Space Invaders or Street Fighter or any game that you like from your, your childhood. So that's where we are. Food-wise, I'm actually going to keep it simple. I'm going to keep, basically, it's going to be a build-your-own-burger kind of bar right so whatever you want in your burgers whether it's chicken beef burgers you want your bacon the various different cheeses the uh you know the lettuce all whatever you want you can kind of assemble it all there yourself and you can just attack it and you can go up as much times as you like it's got all the sides that you can think of the onion rings the fries loaded fries all of that stuff's there so it's just basically think of it as like a buffet but but it's fresh not, not a buffet that's getting stale. As Tambo will know, if you like leave food out for a long time, it gets awful. So that's all going to be there. And I'm not theming my games around 80s themes because I'll struggle mm. <laughs> unless I play games from the 80s. And I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I am sparing you. So I am thinking of everybody here. I've got first up, we need to go hard. We need to go spicy. We need to get this this party off and a bang. So I'm bringing Arcs to the table, all right? Now, Arcs, I just love the banter of this game and it's just going to get us all going and, yeah, get the pulses racing, all that kind of stuff. And I think then we need to tone it down a little bit because, you know, after everyone's been kind of raided and lost all their, their shit, I'm going to bring Las Vegas Royale. Kind of themes sort of to the arcade vibe, you know? Bit of mini gambling, bit light. Lots of dice rolling. Again, keeping that banter really high at the table. You know me. I do like my mid-weight games. And I'm going to step it up to a bit of Lorenzo Il Magnifico. It's got nothing to do with 80s. I don't care. I like the game. It's great fun. And uh, who doesn't like towers? Enough said. Um, and we're going to step up to probably the heaviest game, which will be Nucleum. And mainly because I've been enjoying that. And I think Tambo's not played it. And I think he'll love it. And then bringing it back down to a nice chill of avant card that's got a nice mix of medium, light, bit of heavy, hopefully something for everyone. That is my game day. 80s rock, baby. Well, I don't know about you listeners, but I think I absolutely crushed it. I mean, who does not want to be in an 80s theme? I mean, it's the best era. It's got all of the great music. Okay, so he's picked the best era in the world, 80s. Love 80s era music. It's fantastic. Oh, bless him. I really wanted to like it because he was so excited when he was telling us about his 80s theme. I expected a little more, JP. I mean, I got the 80s reference. I love that. And I love the fact that we're going to be playing Nucleum. Avant-Garde is a wonderful party game. But Lorenzo, really? I mean, come on. And arcs, I, I enjoy arcs, but I don't love it. So. I mean, the games are awesome. It's got a bit of everything. I don't care if anyone moans. I'm not going to listen because who cares? That all of their ideas are crap. I love arcade games. I love the games I was growing up with. So the arcade theme was amazing. I give it all dues to him. When I'm at home, all Curly listens to is like retro new wave or whatever it's called, just 80s synthy, and it's fine. But oh, I don't want it on a games day. And I never went to a um, an arcade as a kid, so I don't really have nostalgia for it. The food, burgers, love a burger, but, you know, it's not very creative, is it? Let's face it. So I never get a little bit of a letdown on the food, I think. Um, where are my snacks? I wanted some snacks. I mean, you didn't even say there was a tea and coffee involved, so, you know, come on. As for the games, fantastic. Let's leave it. Love Arcs. Lorenzo, love Lorenzo. He's picked some great games. Nuclear, can't comment yet, but I've always wanted to play it, so I heard it's like Brass Birmingham, so I'm sure we're going to enjoy it. And Anvent Card, it's okay. I'm not a massive fan. I think this is the best idea, and I'm going to win. And if I don't win, well, it's a fix. Ah, uh, 
I liked, I mean, I love Las Vegas Royale and I love Avant Card. Lorenzo was all right, but I think I might be a little bit bored most of it. For that, you're getting a solid 7 out of 10, mate. I mean, I just wanted a little bit more, you know, but um, but cracking effort. So the games and, and the settings were a big score. So I am going to score JP a 7. The food, however, sounded fabulous. And I know that JP would be having a really nice time, which would make me have a nice time, I think. Oh, it's hard. I'm sorry, mate. I think it's going to be a five out of ten. I'm really sorry. So, last but certainly not least, Rob's turned to host. I'm going big, guys. I'm going real big. So I'm going to set the scene, right? You get woken up, early hours in the middle of the morning, a little bit Polar Express-like. You're in a dream-like state. There's a bright light from outside. You rush to the window and you look down. Becky, there is the bike and sidecar from Harry Potter to pick you up and bring you to my games day. JP, you rush to the window. The DeLorean is sat on your driveway. (laughs) Doors up, begging you, saying, JP, come and have some fun. Come and have some fun. (laughs) Tambo, there's no vehicle on your driveway. You're thinking, where's that light coming from? You look up, the Millennium Falcon (laughs) is just hovering (laughs) outside your bedroom window. The ramp descends, you hop on it like an athletic Luke Skywalker, (laughs) where you are taken to my house. Mm. It's not my house, though. Okay. It's in the middle of the forest. (laughs) It's my house, but it's there. Because coming to my house, I mean, let's be honest, JP... You literally live five seconds away. <laughs> it's not a lot of time in the DeLorean. No. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit boring. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I've picked up my house and I've, I, I've deconstructed it brick by brick and then reconstructed it in the forest. Okay. We need a lot of space for what's going to go down. So you drive up the, just picture it, close your eyes, people. So there's a, there's a, a gravel track that's going through the forest, twisting, turning, accelerating. You're skidding. Tambo's barrel rolling. I mean, he's flying, <laughs> right? So, so Tambo lands outside my house. You all pull up at the same time where you are greeted by a full house staff of people. They bring you into the house. Now, this is going to, we're going to be moving. We're going to be, we're not going to be stationary. So as you come in, there's going to be Drink of choice, mainly cocktails, alcoholic, non-alcoholic, just a little, just a little something just to wake you up a little bit. I mean, you can't believe that the journey that you've undergone already. So you have a little cocktail or a mocktail, depending on, you know, whether you've brushed your teeth or not, because you got woken up in the middle of the night. (laughs) You know, a bit of mojito for mint, whatever. So as we're coming through, you see a little pedestal. There's four spaces around this pedestal with a little game of dobble right in the middle. Just a little wake-up game. A little, 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 little couple of rounds of double. Just to stay. So then, the waiter comes to tell you that the billiard room is now available. Go through to the billiard room. What's that? On the full-size snooker table, a little bit of saboteur. Just laid out end-to-end, ready to go. Dex, Dex Bill, we all know Tambo loves being a git. Tambo's the saboteur. (laughs) (laughs) We don't know that. We find it out later. So now we want some food. Little little snack. It's where Gordon Ramsay comes in and tells you that he's going to cook for you. Gordon Ramsay said, lads, ladies, whatever you want, whatever your heart's desire, I will make for you. Custom make. But because this is a posh gig, they're going to be micro dishes. They're going to be micro burgers. Like a hot dog. Like a taster menu. Sorry? Sort of like a taster thing. Yeah, like a little, you know, okay. potentially, because it is early, breakfast themed. Okay. Whether you want a little bagel, whether you want a little, uh, a, a twist on the McDonald's double sausage and egg McMuffin. Because, you know, you can't believe that you've already had a cocktail by then. I mean, that's going <laughs> to taste pretty darn good, right? <laughs> but where are we off to now, guys? And all of a sudden you see this little bust of me. On the side, you lift the head up. There's a, little, there's a little big, there's a little red button. You press the little red button. The bookcase slides back to reveal a pole going down into the game cave. So we slide down. You got to slide down the fireman pole 
into the game cave where there is a Vegas sized crabs table with the Witcher laid out end to end. So we're going to have a big old game of the Witcher. Now this is going to take a while, but we need to give Gordon plenty of time to cook our food. So it's fine. So at the table, you've got your own little, almost like a little dolly tray next to you full of handcrafted sweets, crisps. And just for JP, there's a little cheeky bag, a kettle, kettle chili chips. Not just, the red ones. The red yeah. ones. <laughs> not, not the red ones. And when I say bag, I mean bucket. <laughs> <laughs> and they're there just, just they're, it's almost like they're refilling like as you're going. Like there, there's no way of getting to the bottom of this, you know? Tambu's got his mix of sweets and chocolate because that's what you bring to most game days. Mm. Becky, I think we've already gone through your snacks, but <laughs> jelly beans. Not the posh ones. <laughs> the ones you like. The ones, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we have full table service, waiters, waitresses. But these just aren't any waiters or waitresses. These are A-list celebrity actors, pop stars. You think your idol and all of a sudden they're there. Bring it's Captain me. Jack bringing me food on a... Not Johnny Depp. Oh. Captain Jack. Oh, yeah. No, that's cool. Then. Yeah, Good. that's nice. what I mean. Yeah. Not the actor, yeah, yeah. the role. The Whatever character. you want yeah. Yeah, yeah. is cool. there. So also The Witcher, bit of, a, bit of a heavy hunting game. So we've got bands playing in the background. Not, not too loud. They're doing like acoustic sets. They're doing a real mix of everything. We got the Foos. We got Oasis. We've got Queen. <laughs> we've got Led Zeppelin. We've got we got we got them all, baby. Think Live Aid, <laughs> <laughs> but in a game cave. Like we we've got it going on. Actually, can I have Geralt bringing me stuff because we were playing The Witcher? Yes. Yeah, and I'll have Yennefer. Thank you very much. <laughs> Boom, baby. So obviously The Witcher is quite a long game. So we finished that up. By then Gordon comes in and announces that our food is ready. So we go to the table, we eat, we chat, we have a bit of fun. So potentially a little bit of just one if we're not gamed out too heavy. Maybe by this point, you know, you want, uh, you want, you kind of want to go away and kind of split, mix up. Like you want, you want to chat to someone one-on-one -on -one individually. So on one table, we've got Star Wars, the deck building game for two players. On the other table, we have Ashes Reborn. Okay. Bit of a mix, but one-to-one -one games that you can have a conversation over. Okay. So after this, we're going back up the lift where we're going to the main hall where after we've had our food and everything else, we go back up to the main table where there are two tables, two big round tables, one Karuka board. One, crock and hole board. We're having a mixy matchy tournament of crock and hole and Karuka. A little bit of a uh, little bit of stretchy legs, a little bit of get up and move around the table. Um, and, and after that, your vehicle of choice that came to get you in the magical night will take you home. You get back into bed and wonder, did it ever happen? <laughs> For the rest of your life, you'd be like, it felt real. But it couldn't possibly real because it was that damn good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. I don't see how anyone is beating that. I mean, you've got a Michelin star chef cooking you food. You've got all the snacks you could ever need. You've got your dream vehicle picking you up and taking you to the ultimate game day where there's secret rooms, surprises galore. I mean, we've got live bands. What more could you want? So, Rob Dog, Rob Dog, Rob Dog. Um, yeah, so waking up and then getting picked up in Millennium Falcon. It's a great idea, love it, but it's just not very good for the environment, is it? Oh, blimey, well, I mean, he did go all out for that, didn't he? So, Hagrid's picking me up. I've decided it's Hagrid in the, in the Harry Potter thing. That would be awesome. Middle of the woods, that'd be pretty cool. Well, I don't know what to say after that, I think. Do you believe in a single word that's come out of his mouth? All of that fantasy nonsense. What he didn't say is that the DeLorean may have picked me up, but he didn't say it was the Lego DeLorean and the door fell off. And then claiming your house is in the forest, but it's not his house. It's rebuilt from the bottom. So it's not his house. It could be anybody's house. I'm just not sold on the games. I and mean, I like Dobble. That's pretty cool. Saboteur's cool. 
Uh, the micro food, though, I don't know. After I've had a little taste of something good, I want a proper fatty breakfast or something. And The Witcher. Mm, I don't know if I'd like to play that. If Geralt could serve me the food while I'm playing, that would probably make it worth it, though, I suppose. You can't fault his uh, attention to detail, the fact that he's personalised everything for everyone. So I'll give him kudos for that. But okay, cool idea. All right, so we went in and then double. I hate double so bad. Played it with my niece and nephew, hated it so much. Double? Double? Really? I want a games day, Rob. I don't be playing a kid's game. I want to play something a bit more meatier. And the fact I've got to keep moving to different rooms just to play a game. God, what a faff. And then Star Wars and Ashes. I don't think I want to play either of them. Karuka and Crockett. Oh, now you're talking. Gordon Ramsay is your chef. Lazy. I mean, hiring a chef to do all your work for you. I mean, I made all my stuff. So come on. But yeah, generally, I really enjoyed The Witcher um, and playing all that. That's all good fun. And then The Witcher. Love The Witcher, but it's a long drift Witcher. I mean, playing the game all day, that same game all day long. Okay. And I know you can have all drinks and coffees, which is great. But good. Love Witcher, so he's probably okay with that. So, and then the pole down to the games room. Does he not think of my ankle? I've got a bad ankle. You know, arthritis. I can't use the pole. Is there any stairs? Come on, Rob. So, I'll take my victory now. Thank you very much, guys. I'm going to score for the whole day. I mean, a bit of a disappointing four. I'm going to have to say, a, I think a seven. I think a seven's fair because the day would be pretty epic because of all the stuff, but probably not because of the games. Not enough cool games for me. For a games day, I'm going to play games. And also, don't wake me up at 3am. It's going to piss me off. So I think for that, I'm going to give you a good solid 6 out of 10. Okay, that is the end of the, the come dine with me. All that's left is to reveal the secret score. I have to admit, this is secret. We've just had Shell, my wife, be the independent adjudicator. Do all on, the totals. And do all our totals. So this is genuinely... Like, we don't know who's won this. So, so It's like the Oscars when they open it, the envelope. It, absolutely. <laughs> Rob is holding a piece of paper that's folded in half. Because I was the last person to host the event, yeah. uh, it's my responsibility to tell you all that I've won. Absolutely. So yeah. um, Right, sure, sure. Yeah. sure. <laughs> so, Rob, do the honours, my friend, okay. and reveal last I place. genuinely feel a little bit like nervous. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're only having a laugh, and this, yeah, this, right, you, is everybody ready? Yeah, yeah ready. Let's see. Oh, I don't know what, how okay. this is going to go. Are you lot fucking joking? <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking joking? <laughs> go on, who's last? Who's last? Me. <laughs> <laughs> really? What, so what? Who gave me a four? Who gave me a four? What was the total? What was your total? My total was 17. Are you lot insane? <laughs> Right, listeners, this is an absolute travesty. I want you all to storm the Capitol building. No, I don't. I don't. Um, yeah, this this has been a lot of fun. So, um, so in third place is insert drum roll here. JP. Hey, with nineteen. I mean, come on, the electricity bill of putting all those arcade machines on constantly <laughs> for twenty four hours is a lot of money. Granted, maybe not as much as uh, Gordon Becky's, Ramsay. Becky's flights to, to Florida. Or, or Gordon, Gordon Ramsay's, Ramsay's for an evening. Yeah, <laughs> that might have happened. That may not have happened. We don't know. You, you could have just drugged us and <laughs> right. we just told us that's what happened. There are two points in it for people. Ooh. For Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Halloween or Florida. So, I, there, there's no point in announcing second place, so I'm just going to announce the yeah. winner. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And the winner is... Of the 2024 <laughs> Come Dine inaugural 20, uh, Come Game With Me event. <laughs> Fictional event. <laughs> that didn't actually happen. I'm just going to drag this out. No, I'm not. Um, congratulations to the winner, Tambo. Oh, oh, very well deserved, T. Well done, Very T. well deserved, T. Wow. Of 22. Nice. Ooh, very nice. And a 30. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Very nice. Love what was my score? Just so I know. 20, Not that it matters. 20. But, okay. 20. Cool. I'll take that. I'll take that. Oh, Which one are you? I'm surprised. Backstabbing git. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> gave me a four. Well, you oh, that's a surprise. You you're going to have to listen back to this episode <laughs> to know what happened. Sort of bullshit. Right there. <laughs> I think tease was the best themed, I have to say. He had the most like connected theme yes, with games, location, food. Yeah. Was, Mine was just was my, my favourite things, which aren't connected. Yeah. So I just I wanted liked... to play heavy games in an 80s place. In fairness, mm. mine was quite selfish. I, I actually changed my game list about three times, four times, because <laughs> I thought, well, I'll go all heavy if it was me. And I thought, 
well, it's yeah, just going to alienate like half of this uh, yeah, this group yeah, yeah. here. So it's quite a weird dynamic to try and cater for everyone. I went That's bones. Quite I went um, burn yeah, cycle. Yeah. And then I was like, no, nah, Witcher, because even if you don't like the theme. Becky loves Geralt. Yeah, so I, um, this is something for everyone. I hate double. I can't stand it. Uh, so you give me the four. <laughs> 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 No, I think T's... It's meant to wake you up because you're asleep from your journey. <laughs> I think T's was the most cohesive. I yes. think that that is a well-deserved win. You, oh. you put quite a lot of thought into that. Yeah. Thank you. So I like the menu curation. Yeah. That was great. Mine's just all the snacks that Lidl make. Which... I love the fact we flew to America, <laughs> went to Epcot on a boat, and we're playing on Fathomable, which is very thematically yeah, linked. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But we're eating frazzles. Yeah, like... come on. <laughs> Why would you not want to do that? And Lidl's jelly beans. That's yeah. what I want to eat when I'm there. <laughs> You're in the World Centre or whatever you call it. World the, Showcase. The World yeah. Showcase. You've got all of the food. And we're eating Lidl snacks. And yeah, we're well, Lidl snacks. That's Fair because, enough. you know, I'm I'm a mixture of all sorts of Love things. Love it. Highbrow and Lidl snacks. Yeah. <laughs> So there you go. That That's is a great nice episode. Work, guys. Yeah, that was I a good fun episode. Yeah, really, really well That is done come me. game with me. I thought it'd be a bit of fun. We've all been slagging each other off, so we'll probably get back to normal now. And mm-hmm. uh, and I think because logistically, this episode has actually taken us a lot longer because what you don't see is us running in and out of a room because <laughs> we'll edit all that together. Um, so we're actually going to skip past our uh, Would You Rather this episode and we'll go straight in to the penultimate turn. So we're back now for our penultimate term where we're going to talk about all of the things that we're excited for. So, Becky, what's coming up that you're like, bring it on, baby. Mm. I want more of that. I've actually put an Earth game in. I actually have put that in. And I don't believe many people have signed up yet. I can't, it's too early. I want to play it. Yeah, it's it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. 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 Curly's going to be back back up. I really want to play it. Yeah, I've heard it all before. I mean, I put in so many events. I mean, I can't... (laughs) <laughs> no, that's, that'd be cool. Um, what I'm really looking forward to is getting more into my kind of handicraft stuff that I've done. So I crocheted this shawl thing that I'm wearing currently, and it kind of made me realise I really like handicrafts and don't do enough at the mm. minute. So um, I'm going to complete my gelatinous cube that I bought, the cross stitch that I bought from um, the Enchanted Needle. So I think that's on Etsy at Enchanted Needle. The um, she does a load of amazing board games slash D&D slash geeky yeah. little cross stitches. And these are little sets that I bought from the UKGE. Um, yeah, and they're really great. So check check out Enchanted Needle The. I'm sure we'll put a link in the show notes. We can do that. So, uh, yeah. Is that the same one that you met at UK Games? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, So I I did the acid vial, which is really cool. Um, And, yeah, I did a, got a gelatinous cube, which I haven't done yet. So that's what I'm going to do. Sounds good to me. How about you, Rob? Well, in two days' time, uh, we are all getting back together for our third round of D&D. Oh, yeah. You've started ho- ho- a campaign. Hosted yeah. by the wonderful Stuart Enyu. Who, uh, who's been on I bet the he's show. Great yeah, I bet he's, yeah. he's a wonderful DM, yeah. and I've always wanted to play it, and we played it kind of very loosely. You know, Chris, uh, Chris P. Ninja uh, ran a very small campaign that was going really well, and then we hit uh, lockdown. Uh, and we played it online and it kind of lost a lot of legs. It's, it's not, and, it just isn't the got, same, is it? Yeah, exactly. And he got really frustrated with it. So um, so uh, that was great. But this is this is another level. I mean, Davey and his mind, the places it goes to, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing of beauty mm-hmm. and terror all at the same time. I love it. Um, so we're having an absolute blast. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, to getting back. We, we've had a bit of a break because Taz got married. Oh, selfish, that's nice. Congratulations, Taz. Um, I mean, who doesn't put D&D above their own wedding? Yeah. No, congratulations, Taz. Well, I'm Taz. really, really happy for you. Um, so, yeah, getting back together um, for that, which is going to be awesome. But also, can I just have a little... I know Chris P mentioned it on the last episode. No. Space Marine no. 2. <laughs> it's just... It's amazing. It's, it's the, the game is wonderful because it's a AAA title that actually work so it, you know it's been released and it's wonderful but to be honest it's made me so interested getting back into the law of 40k and the horus heresy um it's a wonder one it's not a wonderful universe it's a horrible horrible universe but some of the stories there um and it's made me kind of want to go and paint 
minifigures again and it's just it's just sucked me right back into the world that's cool um so so yeah looking forward to hooking up with t and chris and adrian and davy and kind of everyone just to go and shoot some aliens because it's so much fun and that's me hmm. sounds good man how about you t um a couple of weeks i've got my yearly visit to Bude for a week in the house um, apparently it's just off the past Brendan Arms which is right by the canal and right by the beach it's about next to a pub so I do it every year um, can't wait get the dog down the beach have coffees and then go back and play games with my brother sounds, nice. Nice. sounds yeah. bloody perfect nice. to me mate. Sounds lots, lots of games lovely. we're going to do a yearly hopefully game of Rebellion we like our Star Wars oh, Rebellion it's yeah. so good yeah so good I need um, to play it more yeah, yeah. so it's going to be fun I'm looking forward to it nice yeah. relaxing and games nice. sounds good to me mate um, for me, I've actually just set up a uh, an event for Lisboa, and I'm actually really happy because Dan's coming along. He's not played before, and he's like, "Oh, I'll jump in on that." And actually, we've got, yeah, I would say a different group than I normally would playing that, and that's a good. That's why I'm excited about it because yeah. is I'm not being horrible to the heavy hitters; they're not there. Yeah. I'm not, I don't want to be some horrible to the no, group, no. but it's going to be good. It's me, but, Stuart. And, but it's it's a good it. mix. It's a different mix. It's yeah, a different mix. And I I really enjoy that around the table. Not that I don't enjoy our normal game nights, but it's just nice to get um, some people who don't I don't game with as much to the table. So mm. yeah, yeah, it's going to be a good good fun. And uh, and we all, you know, I know Stuart's a big fan of Lisboa. I, like we know it's my my favourite Lacerda game, and I know T you enjoy it. Yep. And the fact Dan's not played it, but. You know, he, I've recently taught him Inventions and he absolutely loved that. And we played uh, on Mars recently. And again, he really enjoyed that. So I'm hoping he'll come with the same, oh, I think this is pretty good fun. And uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. So that is me. Nice. And that's it, isn't it? Mm. I'm all exhausted. Just like yeah, that's a big off. episode. Yeah. <laughs> well, like getting up and walking out. Yeah. yeah get, <laughs> someone, someone waking me up at 3 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but they're waking you up with the... DeLorean. Yeah. I mean, come Can't on. Go wrong, to go and it? play board games. Yeah. And eat food. I'm not getting back into it. Apparently to one of you, that's a four. <laughs> it's, a, it's very loud and scary, a big spaceship above you, though, isn't it? I mean, yeah. That would be quite as frightening. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Just, just Only joking, lost, Rob. Only lost the most on random it. thing that happened in your neighbourhood, <laughs> would it? <laughs> <laughs> so we have got to the end of the show. I just want to say a massive thank you to uh, all of our listeners, as always, for sticking with us, for for enjoying our content and uh, and engaging with us in the way you do we absolutely love that you do and please continue to do so on all our socials and things because we just love it we love replying to you and understanding kind of what you're playing and what's going on in your world um if you want to support the show you can absolutely do that we are on coffee which is k-o-f-i and even if you give us you know a, a few pence that you can kind of rub together it's all good stuff it really helps the show it really keeps this going and uh yeah, it keeps us coming up with ideas. It keeps leveling up our equipment, and hopefully, the you know the quality of what we're doing is improving each week. So, yeah, all that's left to say is, whose turn is it anyway? <laughs> <laughs>